Well, had kind of an unfortunate accident. This was my this was my SS 5000 time cutter. This is a great mower. I never had a single issue with it. Had it since uh, I think 2015, and it caught fire. Not exactly sure what happened. My wife went to go use it, and she said that she went to go start it a couple times. And uh, it hit, she heard like a hiss noise, and then it popped. And she went to go lift the seat up, and this sucker is fully engulfed in flames down here. But as you can see, uh, it's not really salvageable. I mean, I don't really think there's anything worth anything on here. It was a pretty hot fire. Uh, messed up my garage door. I mean, it warped the heck out of it. And then it's a insulated door, so you can hear a. And then down here, so it melted all the foam out of it. Uh, it's hard to tell, but there's some smoke damage. And there's a five gallon bucket. That's not really a five gallon bucket anymore. Uh, that was a cooler. It's not really a cooler anymore. Engine stand's no good. Shovel. Uh, <laughs> that over there, that was the fuel tank. And it made a heck of an oily mess. But uh, I had to call the fire department, have them put it out. I was at work. My wife said there were several explosions, one of them probably being this fuel tank right here, and then the four tires popping. Yeah, so, and then something kind of put a hole in that, so. Anyways, the insurance adjuster is out here today, and we'll see what happened. That wasn't necessarily the most pleasant experience because the guy wasn't really helpful, and he didn't have much to offer information wise um and then i called my insurance company and this is the first time i ever had to deal with something like this so i didn't know what to expect and they didn't exactly offer a lot of information either so i don't know if anybody's ever had to deal with fire damage you know put a comment down below I'm kind of curious how your experience went but uh Figure we go out here and see what we got going on. Here's my uh, barn shop. Uh, so this side I have redone. That's what I've been working out of. I had some storm damage earlier this year. Uh, we've had a lot of tornadoes up here in uh, Iowa. And just some heavy wind and whatnot. My gutter got ripped off, so... That's what's left, I gotta fix that. So we've been getting kind of ravaged lately. Oh yeah, and then I had a bunch of trees that fell back here. I recently got them uh, pulled out of there. Let's go take a look. What's going on in here? As you can see, I got this all spray foamed. Uh, if you go check out my other video, uh, link up in the corner there, uh, Clanton Creek Spray Foam, uh, they did this for me. Did a fantastic job. So if anybody is in the Iowa, surrounding Iowa area, needs some spray foam done, check out Clanton Creek Spray Foam. Link down in the description. But uh, here we are. Engine's ready to go in. The only thing I have to do, because for the life of me, I cannot figure out where this freaking bracket goes. I went over all my videos and I just cannot find. I got three bolts and one bracket and I am not sure where it goes. So yeah, ready to stick this back in. If I had to guess, I think that bracket goes probably somewhere back here. But 
So right here, I'm going to jump back in time, kind of show you what led up to this point, and then we'll catch back up to where we're at right now. All right, so when you get to this part, we're going to get ready to throw the starter back in. And uh, on the starter, you got this dust cover piece. Don't be like me and forget to put it back in. It goes right down in here. Um, helps if I remember how it went back in there. I think it goes in like this. Something like that. That looks pretty doggone close. Yep, something like that. Don't forget it. It's a good little dust cover to have. Then we're gonna throw our starter back in. There's three bolts that come from the transmission side. They're all the same length, so there's no particular way that it goes in. So here's your, your three starter bolts. They go in through the back side to bolt that in tight. So now that you have the starter bolts in, you get this pump, put it back in its holder, right here. Just like that. That's where that belongs. Before I get going too far, let me make a status update here. You need to not forget to run your hard steel lines that go for your uh, turbo cooling. And they get ran behind this hose. This is the, the plastic uh, inlet that goes into the back of the head. So this hose is above your hard lines. Your hard lines run along the head and they bolt in the block, I believe, right here. I'm still trying to figure that part out. I didn't get good video of that last time. So they run as close to the head as you can get it right there. Kind of sit out in the air. So I'm pretty sure that's how those get mounted. When this housing comes through, sits over top, just kind of lays there. We already got this mounted in here earlier. This is where it starts to get kind of crazy. Your uh, oil cooler runs behind this line and this is attached to your bracket for your uh, hard lines to your uh, intercooler or not intercooler to your uh, turbo cooling lines so turbo cooling lines runs over top of the wire harness sits right here kind of in place it's gonna bolt into the intercooler right there but this is kind of where it just floats for now wire harness runs underneath it yeah, this part's a, a pretty big mess and I don't have the write-up for this and I should have took way better videos of how this goes. So take your time uh, and make sure everything just kind of lays where it's supposed to, where it looks normal. And I got the AC pump lightly mounted in case I got to take it back off. So let's keep going. So I'm going to try to go over this as best I can. I may have everything in the right place. I may not. Um, so I'm going to try to detail this as much as possible. Kind of give you guys an idea of where everything goes. Just go real slow around here. See if I can give you the whole shebang. Crank sensor follows up along the edge, up top. See, this is how the injector harness goes. Spark plugs. Have this run across the top. Goes into the main loom. Main loom comes down. Got your throttle body here. Okay, Let's see if we can give you some more light here. Uh, this clips in here. Uh, let's see here. So here's kind of sort of how your hoses route. Hopefully that gives you an idea. I'm not sure quite yet where this clips in. I think it clips in right here on the 
AC line. Uh, I better not forget to put that on. That's uh, your uh, coolant that goes into the oil cooler. Comes here, water pump, uh, thermostat housing, As far as your wiring goes, you have your AC clutch wire here, comes across, uh, your high pressure line right there. Hopefully that gives you kind of an idea. Runs across the front there. Uh, your knock sensors, that was kind of interesting. They actually, uh, actually crisscross. This side goes across and up. The other one goes across, or sorry, the other one comes across and up. So this right here is actually the knock sensor over there, and the one that plugs in up over here goes right there. So, um, yeah, hopefully this gives you guys a good idea. So you can see your coolant lines, the hard steel lines come across there, as close as the block as you can get them. And then, uh, yeah, there's, like I said, leave that part loose. Because you're going to have to kind of wiggle and get this put on there. And I got to clean up this guy yet. And right after this, my next video section about putting the turbo back on uh, got corrupted. So I don't have any video for that. So now back to the regular schedule program. Back in there. Some other projects I got going. I've uh, been helping my friend, Honda Express 2. Uh, didn't run. Uh, had no compression. We did a little ATF, dropped in there and... Uh, spun the engine over a little bit. She runs now, runs just fine. Anyways, we're getting there, folks. We're getting there. There's Shelby. Nice Joby girl. Hey, Joe puppy. Who's your girl? She's looking old. She's getting gray. Can you say hi? Say hi. Good girl. Good girl. She's a Chesapeake Bay Retriever uh, mix, I think maybe with a lab or something. This is. Sophie, come here, Sophie. This is Sophie. She's my one-eyed bandit. You can see she's. She'll let you see it. She's missing an eyeball. She had a cancer in her eye. Well, that's about it for this uh, episode here. I appreciate you guys joining me along. It's been kind of a crazy week. Had a lot going on, but uh, next week we'll be doing some more exciting things. Getting the car finished up. Get it running. Get it out of the garage. And then I can get moving on to some other projects around the house and uh, some more projects in general. Like I'd like to get my uh, high lift fuel pump put on my F-350 with the 6 liter diesel. Uh, it's pretty modified. I'll go over that in a future video. So if that's something you'd like to tune into, uh, come back here to Fix Dish and we will see you guys next time.